now coming back to quiz number two and how we actually look into that the quiz number two the question was again that you have a amide bond present in a protein and this amide bond actually absorbed in the region of 175 nanometer to 230 nanometer and more interestingly the pi to pi star transition and n to pi star transition these are the two primary transition that actually occurs so pi to pi star transition that generally occurs around 175 to 190 195 nanometer region that may differ a little bit depending on what is overall structure and whereas the n to pi star transition that actually occurs around the region of 220 nanometer so this figures i'm saying it is kind of that the central part of the absorbance bar the maximum so over there you can see that uh, when you look into a cd graph when you look into a cd graph and how it actually looks like and you can see that for alpha helix it has a band structure like this where these are actually coming at 208 nanometer 222 nanometer something around that region this is the cd graph So over there you can see that it is comes around 195 nanometer or so. So all these peaks actually coming from pi to pi star or into pi star transition. So what is, but that actually planar and a planar molecule already has a sigma plane. So it shouldn't be uh, CD active the way we have uh, studied. So why it is still being CD active? The answer lies that it is actually having this two alpha carbons sitting next to each other which are actually optically active and they actually induce cd activity or in the other term chirality on this amide background so that was the main concern that is actually happening over there and over there how it is happening so if you look very closely this is the electric deployment for the carbonyl somewhere around here is the n to uh, C, uh, pi star transition which is coming from the lone pair of the nitrogen so both of them are active so altogether what happens the actual dapple moment for this system because they're conjugated lies somewhere around this red line and now that is actually having an angle other than 90 degree with respect to the cd active bands coming from this alpha carbons i am drawing that in helically because there the mu electric and mu magnetic both are actually active whereas in the red region only mu electric is active for the n2 pi star pi 2 pi there is no mu m active however this blue line and this red line actually combine together and that is why this interaction of the n2 pi star or pi 2 pi star they also become optically active because that is actually having some influence coming from this uh, this uh, chirally active alpha carbon center and because they have a uh, angle between them a non 90 degree angle so they become optically active and that is known as the induced chirality so over there in this system when you're actually looking for the answer the th things you have to write that okay the pi 2 pi star and n2 pi star are planar not really optically active so where this optically activity reality is coming to so one thing you have to say is that it is coming from the induced chirality from the alpha carbon that is one point and secondly you have to influence a little bit how it is actually influencing and that is coming from this dipole moment interaction so if you can write it in one of the other language that is fine so that is the two points i was actually looking for and uh, I have shared your marks with all of you. If you have any query or question, please let me know. But refrain from asking questions like, my friend, they probably write totally wrong. I believe I should get more number. So please leave that thing to me, like who has written what, and let me decide, which will be the best way to provide the marks to you and what will be the best way to judge you at this particular point. And I can actually, assure you like what you have done and where you can actually improve.
So there is no point of comparing me with the other because you haven't seen the answers for each of you. That is what I've seen by myself. So let that judgment uh, line to me. And you have to believe me that I am uh, being fair with all of you. There is no partiality among each of you. And with respect to that, that marks has been created. And all of you actually already got a good amount of marks in that respect. So don't need to worry too much because that is not going to affect your overall grade too much. Because the average uh, number, if I believe it is close to 8.5. So it is very close to the full marks in this. So most of the marks which is going to affect your grading will be probably the end sum exam. So that is where you have to put a lot of effort over there and write the answers properly. So over there, any questions, any quiz or any assignment I'm giving to you, you have to ensure that it is not about you have to write this particular way or this particular thing. You can write in different ways. You can write an answer multiple ways. That is totally fine. But you have to ensure that you are writing according to the what is the question has been asked and answer it or provide your logic accordingly. That is what I'm looking for. Say I'm writing you to write that induced chirality, induced CD activity. Even if you don't write these particular terms, but in your own words, you have mentioned the same thing. I'm happy with it. Okay. So try to understand the question properly and then try to answer it. 